What is going on? Thank you for tuning in, and I hope you're doing well. Now, December is now upon us. We're well into December, so I figure it's about time I dial the Christmas spirit up a couple notches. And if there's a surefire way that we do that in my house, it's through some classic Christmas movies. So being that I'm getting myself in the Christmas spirit, and I'm also getting myself more and more into VHS collecting, I figured I'd knock out a quick video where I talk about my top five favorite Christmas movies in my VHS collection. Now, as with everything that I talk about, nostalgia is a big part of this. So this isn't necessarily the movies that I think are the greatest Christmas movies ever made. These are movies that I grew up with that, you know, it's just not Christmas unless I watch them. And, and it's also movies that I happen to have in my VHS collection. So the list may change over time and it's obviously very subjective. It's gonna differ a lot from, from what you guys uh, hold closely as your favorite Christmas movies. Alrighty, so let's rip into it. But before we get to the top five, I'm just gonna rattle off a couple of quick honorary mentions. The first one for me is Gremlins. I absolutely love Gremlins, but I didn't see it until maybe five or six years ago. So, you know, it doesn't carry that same nostalgia for me, but it, that doesn't mean that I don't love it. Now, I've, I've heard debate about whether or not Gremlins qualifies as a Christmas movie. To me, there's no question. It's got all the trappings of Christmas. It's got the snow, it's got the music. You know, Gizmo was, was a Christmas gift. So to me, to me, it definitely qualifies as a Christmas movie, but it doesn't need to be Christmas for me to watch it. Like, to me, I look at Gremlins more as like a, a fun kind of creature feature horror comedy that just happens to take place at Christmas. You know, the mood will strike me to watch Gremlins, you know, all times a year. So so it, it's not one of those films that's specifically attached to Christmas for me. Now, the second honorary mention is A Christmas Story. Now, A Christmas Story is another movie that I didn't grow up watching, but I only watched for the first time like maybe three or four years ago. Uh, so it's something that I discovered as an adult, I've fallen in love with, but just because I didn't grow up with it, that doesn't mean that I don't get nostalgia from it because I really like Christmas movies where either the central protagonist is a child or the story is told from the perspective of a kid, as we have with Ralphie in A Christmas Story. And when I watch it, I definitely get nostalgic for the, for that, for the Christmases of your childhood, you know, department store Santas. Seeing a new toy in, in, a, in a Christmas window at a shop that you really want you know, hanging out with your friends in the lead up to Christmas. Christmas was obviously just different. You know, there was something just more special about it when, when you're a child. And I definitely get that kind of nostalgia from a Christmas story, even though it's set in the 40s, like 40 plus years before I was born. So a Christmas story is another one that I like. And when I think about a Christmas story, there's another aspect of a lot of these movies that resonate with me. And that is the idea of a snowy wintertime Christmas which is something that I feel like I can identify with because all the movies and TV shows that I watched that celebrated Christmas throughout my childhood had that common theme. Uh, but for me personally, I've only ever experienced, living here in Australia, to me, I've only ever experienced a summer Christmas, but I still love watching movies with the snow and the ice skating and, and all those kind of elements. So a Christmas story definitely gets a mention. Alrighty, so the last honorable mention before we crack into the top five list isn't even a movie at all, but as long as I'm sitting here telling you guys about the things that I just have to watch on Christmas, you know, the things that I have to watch or else it doesn't feel like Christmas, is the Mr. Bean episode, Merry Christmas, Mr. Bean. Now, this is just 25 minutes of nostalgia to me. It's something that in my family, we, we, we pretty much always watch either on Christmas Eve or more frequently on the afternoon of Christmas Day after we've had lunch and we sit down. We'll usually put that on along with one or two movies that I'll, I'll, I'll get into when I talk about the top five list. So Merry Christmas, Mr. Bean is, is a special one for me. I just love every minute of it. From killing the power at Harrods department store, well, at least to, just to test these Christmas tree lights, cutting down the town square Christmas tree because the Christmas market sold out of trees, you know, losing his watch in the turkey when he's stuffing it, and then getting the turkey stuck on his head trying to retrieve the watch, it's just, it's all the classic hallmarks of Christmas, you know, from the tree to the lights to the shopping, but just with everything going wrong. And that's actually a common theme 
of, of a lot of movies that I really like uh, watching at Christmas. Christmas disaster stories that kind of are outlandish but at the same time feel relatable. So Merry Christmas Mr. Bean had to get a mention but enough of that let's tear into the top five. Alrighty so number five on my list is Jingle All The Way. Now for a guy who collects vintage action figures from his childhood Jingle All The Way is obviously not much of a stretch for me to get on board with but I absolutely loved it. I mean Arnold Schwarzenegger as the dad, going to battle with the stampeding Christmas crowds, Sinbad playing the, his, his arch nemesis, the crazy mailman, you've got the sadistic cop, you've got a hundred con men in Santa costumes, and uh, while Arnie negotiates with all this, then you've got an awesome Phil Hartman playing the do-gooder ladies man of the neighborhood, kind of moving in on his wife. You add all those things together, and in my opinion, you've got a Christmas classic. Now, when, when Jingle All The Way came out, I was 12 years old, so I wasn't playing with action figures anymore, but at the same time, I wasn't so far removed from it that I couldn't get on board with it. And, you know, I could definitely identify with every Christmas there being that hot item that all the parents were scrambling for and going mental to get in an age before e-commerce. And, uh, you know, watching it as a kid, I remember just kind of getting on board and going along for the ride with Arnie, but now I watch it as an adult, and to me it just perfectly captures the lunacy of the commercial side of Christmas. Uh, and the other thing that I really like about it, particularly being a, a, a collector of toys from the 90s and also the 80s, is when you watch it now, you see just beautiful sh shots in the toy store scenes um, of action figures on pegs, video games in display cabinets. It's really cool to see the toys in the toy store scenes and also the characters in the awesome parade scene at the end, which I really like. The pop culture, you know, faces and characters that you see there, I really like as well. With that said, between the parade and the toy store scenes, I would have, you know, I would have kind of loved them even more if the film was made a little bit earlier in the, in the earlier 90s or, or late 80s, but it's still really cool to see. So Jingle All The Way cracks the top five. Oh, these cookies! I gotta get the recipe from Les. Put that cookie down, now! Alrighty, so number four on my list is Scrooged. Just the classic 80s take on the story, A Christmas Carol, which to me shows just how timeless A Christmas Carol is. You've obviously got Bill Murray, who I've always been a big fan of. In my opinion, just nailing the role of the mean, despicable TV executive, which is a pretty awesome 80s equivalent of the Victorian era Scrooge character. And again, to me, I really like Bill Murray's performance. He's despicable, but at the same time, hilarious. And obviously, it's a Christmas carol. You know where the story's going. There's no surprises there. But, but I can still get on board with, with his character's kind of breakthrough at the end. And, uh, and reading up on Scrooge, I think it's a pretty well-known fact that Bill Murray had quite a bit of conflict with the director of the film. And I am watching it the other night, actually. I kind of tend to wonder to what extent that uh, impacted on how just tired and pissed off Bill Murray's character is. So that's something I always appreciate. And, uh, and, and the other thing that I really appreciate about Scrooge, both as a kid but also as an adult, is the ghosts. You know, the creepy, kind of campy 80s practical effects that they used to create um, the ghost of, of uh, Bill Murray's character's mentor that, that tells him he'll be visited by three ghosts. The Marley equivalent in Scrooge. And, uh, and the Ghost of Christmas Past, and also the Ghost of Christmas Future. There's some really cool effects there, and, and a darkness to those effects, and a darkness just to the film in general, which, growing up in the 90s, watching a lot of you know wholesome Christmas comedies, it's just a really nice point of difference. So I've always had love for Scrooge. Scrooge is firmly at, at, at spot four. And the other point that I just want to mention that I really like about Scrooge is, at the same time as the story's playing out, the TV network is putting on a live production of A Christmas Carol. So at the same time as you've got this cool 80s action going on, you've also got these very classic Victorian Christmas scenes kind of in the background, both both you know visually in the background, but also, um, also kind of a, as a bit of a subplot. So that's another cool element of Scrooge. So Scrooge is number four. Apparently this 80-year-old grandmother was watching your Scrooge promo last night and she just, she just keeled over. 
It scared her to death. This is terrific! I knew that had worked! You can't buy publicity like this! Ah! Alrighty, so my number three favourite nostalgic Christmas movie in the VHS collection is Home Alone 2 Lost in New York. Now, obviously, Home Alone 2 is just a play by play, probably minute by minute rehash of the first Home Alone movie in a new place with some new faces. But somehow, some way, in my opinion, they recaptured the magic and they did what so many other sequels don't do. And uh, at least to me, I think a big part of that is the beautiful New York City location. New York City is just one of those cities that to me screams Christmas. From the very first view of the city that we see through the airport window, you know, to the Plaza Hotel, Central Park, uh, the, the Christmas tree at the Rockefeller Center, and the list goes on and on. And then watching it from when I was about, I guess, six or seven years old, from when it first came out, Kevin is just killing it. I mean, he's got the beautiful room at the Plaza Hotel. He's riding around the city in a limo with his own plain cheese pizza. He's hitting up Duncan's toy chest. He's straight up living his best life. And for a child audience to watch that, you're just living vicariously. It's, it's awesome. And, uh, and again, to me, I, I mentioned new faces. Even though the new faces, in some cases, are, are again kind of a rehash, you've got the pigeon lady playing pretty much the same role in the second film that the nice old neighbor played in the first film, it, it works nice. I mean, it's, it's just fun. It's a fun ride to go along with. And then uh, I really like Tim Curry and Rob Schneider's characters. The whole Plaza Hotel scenes, I think, work really well as well. And obviously, if it's a Home Alone movie, you've got booby traps. And, uh, and, and again, somehow, just like everything else, they took it to the next level. Those booby traps are bigger, wilder, more violent. So Home Alone 2, to me, ticks all the boxes, and that's why it's my number three. Alrighty, so we're getting to the point here now. Number two on my list is National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. Now, this gets a run every year without fail in my family and probably has done for close to 30 years now. So definitely a big favorite in the Crusher household and, uh, and for many reasons. I've mentioned before that I just really love the, the Clark Griswold character. Probably one of my favorite movie characters across all genres. I've got the Clark Griswold t-shirt on. You know, just love the idea of the consummate family man. He's staying optimistic, everything's gone wrong around him, and he's just trying to hold it down for his family and make sure he has a good make sure they have a good time. I mean, it's just a relatable concept, and I just love what, what Chevy Chase brings to that character. Love the vacation franchise, but Christmas vacation for me takes the cake. You know, growing up watching it as a kid, I just really like how you follow the Griswolds going through all the Christmas traditions, the tree the lights, the shopping, hosting the family members, negotiating the bickering in the family, hosting, trying to host the perfect Christmas dinner. Clark just wants everything to be perfect, but the harder he tries, the more things go wrong. And you know, growing up, I remember watching a lot of family comedies where things were very kind of idealistic and everything went off without a hitch, which, which can be fun, it's escapism, but to me, there's no relatability in that. And although you, I can't necessarily relate to how off the wall and outlandish the events in Christmas Vacation are. Just the idea of, of a dad trying to do everything right, but the harder he tries, the more things go wrong. It, it's, it's a relatable and it's just a fun concept. So really enjoy Christmas Vacation. Now, I think I mentioned this before, but one of the aspects of Christmas Vacation that I love is the rewatchability and the fact that over time, watching it from when I was eight years old to when I'm almost 38 years old, is it just, it kind of takes a different light. You know, watching it as a kid, it was all about the slapstick laughs, Clark launching himself uh, off the Christmas sled or falling off the ladder. But watching it now as an adult, you know, you appreciate it more for the family dynamics and, uh, and again, the dad trying to hold it together for his family. Obviously, I still crack up at the, at the physical humor, 
but it's definitely just come to mean something different. So National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation is number two. Nobody's walking out on this fun old fashioned family Christmas. No, no, we're all in this together. This is a full blown four alarm holiday emergency here. We're gonna press on and we're gonna have the hap, hap, happiest Christmas since Bing Crosby tap dance with Danny fucking K. And when Santa squeezes his fat white ass down that chimney night, he's gonna find the jolliest bunch of assholes this side of the nut house. Alrighty, so we're finally there. You might have guessed it already, but my number one favorite nostalgic Christmas movie in my VHS collection is Home Alone. Now there's, there's pretty much nothing I can say about Home Alone that hasn't already been said. You know, a personal memory that comes to mind when I think about Home Alone was I clearly remember when I was six years old when the movie first came out, or maybe I was seven years old because I know it was at the cinema for a long time. I remember my mum asking me, hey, do you want to go see Home Alone at the cinema? I really didn't know much about the film. I kind of judged it on its title. She should have shown me a trailer because I said no. And to be fair, I'm still kind of dirty at it to this day because I think Home Alone's pretty much the perfect Christmas movie. When you think about the premise of the film, it shouldn't have had the broad appeal that it does to, to, to kind of all ages. And it, it shouldn't have the legacy that it does 30 years later. But, and this might sound cheesy, when you look at the final product, you can see that the movie was made with love. It wasn't just a, a shameless studio pre-Christmas cash grab. They did it right. You know, you had the amazing John Hughes script, Chris Columbus directing. Obviously, Chris Columbus had come off Gremlins and The Goonies, so he knew how to make a movie that connected with a child-aged audience and an adult audience. Then you throw in the amazing score, the casting's on point. Who would have predicted that Macaulay Culkin would nail it like he did? I mean, he's, he's charming, he's funny, he's precocious but not obnoxious. And, and you've obviously got Joe Pesci in the same year that he won an Academy Award for Supporting Actor for Goodfellas with Martin Scorsese. He's doing this family Christmas comedy. Um, so it, it's all of those elements. It was treated seriously. It was given respect. And the final product is just amazing. Obviously, you've got the booby traps. When you think of Home Alone, you think of the crazy booby traps, the hell that, that Kevin puts these crooks through. Uh, but the movie, so, I mean, obviously those are hilarious. I love that part of the movie, but the movie's so much more than that. When, when I look at Home Alone, when I watch Home Alone from when I was a kid to now, it, f it feels kind of real. The McAllister family from Buzz to Fuller and Uncle Frank, it, it, it feels like a real family dynamic. It feels like a family that you want to be part of. And the McAllister house feels like a real place. It feels welcoming and it feels like somewhere that I want to spend Christmas. So, you know, Home Alone is, yeah, it's it's a family comedy about a kid that gets left home alone and, and uh, sets booby traps for crooks that try to invade the house, but it's just so much more than that. And for those reasons and more, Home Alone is my number one favorite nostalgic Christmas movie in my VHS collection. And I can't think of a movie that I could buy on VHS that I could add to my collection that would take its spot. Home Alone is is on the throne. Did anyone order me a plain cheese? Well, yeah, we did. But if you want any, somebody's gonna have to barf it all up, because it's gone. Fuller, go easy on the Pepsi. <laughs> Get a plate. <laughs> Alrighty, so there's my top five favorite Christmas movies in my VHS collection, but I'm definitely keen to pick up more as I go. I need a copy of Gremlins on VHS, definitely keen to pick up A Christmas Story on VHS, and of course, what VHS collection is complete without Die Hard? So there's three that I'm keen to pick up. But with that said, those are my top five favorite Christmas movies that I grew up with and I like to roll out each and every year. So I'm gonna wrap it up there, no pun intended. I'll wrap it up there. Thank you so much for watching. Would love to hear from you in the comments with your favorite Christmas movies. Always looking for Christmas movie recommendations at this time of year. But that's it for today. Thanks so much for watching. Have a Merry Christmas. And until next time, cheers. You guys give up or you're thirsty for more?